Need a little pick-me-up today? Welcome to the new Fresh Motivation app, where you'll find daily motivation, daily quotes, listen to your favorite speeches in the background or with a black screen, so nothing interrupts your motivational moment, where you can create your personal profile, create playlists of your favorite speeches and quotes, add personal notes, and start setting goals. Fresh Motivation, the home of motivation. Get it now for free on Google Play. The battle is actually in your head. What's in your head is weakness and laziness, and they're not attacking, they're sneaking around. They're poisoning the strength in your brain. If you just decide, I'm going to keep my word. If I say something, I'm going to do it regardless. Being more disciplined. Find something that you can look at your life that you say, hey, I know I've got a problem in this area, being late, procrastinating, not taking care of business, being seriously not serious. I need to deal with that. The system we live in and contribute to is designed to make the easiest things in life the most unprofitable. Our world is and always will be a constant battle between the life of ease and its momentary rewards and a life of discipline. Each has its own price. We will pay one or the other. At the end of your feelings is nothing, but at the end of every principle is a promise. Behind your little feelings, it might not be absolutely nothing at the end of your little feelings, but behind every principle is a promise. And some of you in your life, the reason why you're not at your goal right now because you're just all about your feelings. you all on your feelings. You don't feel like waking up. So who does? Every day you say no to your dreams, you might be pushing your dreams back a whole six months, a whole year. That one single day, that one day you didn't get up could have pushed your stuff back I don't know how long. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds. Do you have a mind to change? Do you have the mindset to be blessed? You have to decide to be blessed. The next time that you're feeling weak or you're feeling lazy or you're feeling emotional, tell them you are declaring martial law on your mind and impose what you want on your brain and use that mind control to move your life where you want it to be. People around you change and you can't, sometimes it's for the better, but sometimes it's not. And it's not bad. It's just that season was over in my life. And so here's the thing, if we try to keep hanging on to something when God is finished with it, there's no point in continuing to try to hang on to something that God's done with him because all it's gonna do is keep you from the next great thing that God has for you. I feel real strongly tonight to tell you guys, spring is right around the corner. Don't give up and don't be afraid of change and don't keep trying to hang on to something that's just not working anymore. Trust God for something better. What really stops us from taking the lead and coming to the forefront, a lot of times is not the lack of talent, it's not the lack, the lack of education. I've been amazed at the people I have met who were highly educated and failing. Highly educated and homeless. So education alone is not the solution. I've worked in penal institutions and seen people who were very gifted and incarcerated. In fact, I've seen people with less talent than you doing more than you. And this is what causes jealousy and envy. When you look and you meet other people who have less to work with than you, and yet they're in higher positions than you, you can either become jealous or you can begin to challenge yourself to say, what is wrong with my belief systems that's stopping me from going to the next level in this area? This is not about money necessarily. This is not about prestige necessarily. This is about progress. Because it's a shame to live long and have no progress. I've been washing these toilets for 27 years. At least let me be the manager of the toilet washers. I want to move up. Maybe it's wrong. Is there anybody in here that wants to move up? 
I'm going to point out six irrational belief patterns that may be hindering you from going to the next level. One of them is undeserving. I just can't see myself as being in this position. I don't deserve it. This often comes from things that people said to you or about you. And so when you see opportunities beyond how you've been programmed, you reject it because you don't feel like you're deserving of it. Beyond undeserving is ordinary. I do not want to stand apart or be different. You'd be surprised at the people because they have a belief system that holds on to being ordinary, they will not take the lead. The third belief system that may be hindering you is social change. I fear rejection, loneliness, or claims that I have changed or sold out. And all of a sudden, in order to fit in in your sociological environment, you passed up the promotion. You wouldn't buy the house that was the best deal for you because it moved you out of the neighborhood that you were defined by because you want the people you're sitting beside to like you and accept you. Oh, and you don't want to be a sellout. The next one I want to deal with is fleeting. My success will be temporal and I will not be able to sustain it. You have performance anxiety. You're afraid that it won't last. You don't want to go out on the date because if you go out on the date, you start a relationship, it's not going to last. It didn't last before. It didn't last with Fred. It didn't last with Jim. It's not going to last. I'm not going to go back to school because I may not complete it. It will not last. And you have a fear that the blessing is fleeting because you have already programmed yourself that nothing else exciting is ever going to happen to you again. The next one I want to talk about is perfectionism. I will have to behave as if I am perfect and I am not. Depart from me, why? Because I know I've got imperfections and I don't want to get in the light because somebody might see them. And so I'm going to be secretly talented. I reject the opportunity to be blessed because I know something about myself that I don't want anybody else to know and I'm more concerned about the security of my reputation than I am my progress. I'm not going to get involved with him because if I get involved with him and he gets too close to me, he will see that I'm not perfect. Where you don't give the person the chance to accept you because you've already criticized yourself, you'd be surprised at the people who talk other people out of loving them. You know exactly what to do to move up into the next position, but you don't want the light on you because you have issues. Newsflash, everybody has issues. Everybody has junk in the trunk. And if you're waiting to clean out all the junk, you may be stuck 20 years cleaning out the trunk. I'm going to go into this next one, besiegement. Don't give me the position because if I become manager of the department, my friends won't invite me out anymore. And you start trying to prove to them that you are still who you were because people will put pressure on you to stay low. And it is true as you go up, there are a great deal of people who associate with you because of where you are and not who you are. Because when you first start going up amongst people who haven't gone up and they start trying to pull you down because they say, you know, you're the first one in our family to get a degree. You ought to take care of this and you ought to take care of that. Some of you know what I'm talking about. And some people for fear of having that pressure on them forfeit the success and stay down rather than to go forward. The inability to manage these fears creates self-sabotaging, self-handicapping situations where you're un incapable of moving forward and it makes you a chronic underachiever. The maybe they'll like me better syndrome keeps you locked into a system that you can't get out of. It's true. When you're absolutely certain that if I do this, it's going to get that result and that result's going to change my life, you'll do it. When you think it absolutely is not going to work, you're never going to do it. The middle no man's land of maybe it'll work, maybe it won't, that's the piece that kills people. If it's a must for you, you got to make it work. 
open people like to live on the periphery of boundaries and they like to break boundaries between things because interesting things happen when you think a different way when you think outside of the box so to speak that's what open people do they always think outside of the box no matter what box you put them in you know and sometimes you meet people that are so open that they're completely disorganized their thought process is almost completely associational like a dreamer they just jump from one thing to another and they're very interesting to talk to it's very hard for those people to get their lives together because they're interested in absolutely everything and their attention just flits all over the place. I'm asking you to have some faith, have some courage, believe, drive your doubts into a small corner. Don't let them loose like a mad dog, drive you into a small corner. Don't doubt the future, don't doubt the possibilities, and here's the most important one of all, don't doubt yourself. If I've got miracle working power to change my life, so do you. If I can grow, you can grow. I'm asking you, don't sell yourself short. We got to go backwards to get better. We got to go all the way back to get better. I have to be comfortable in my life to accept that sometimes loss is the way to gain. To know that sometimes the most painful moments are the most purposeful moments. I have to be comfortable in my life to stop comparing myself so much with people who are not meant to be the standard anyway. Now, I don't know what you're facing today, but I notice everybody in this room is facing something. If it ain't nothing but life. If you don't have nothing to fight but life, if everybody likes you and you're just as beautiful as you can be and as healthy as an Olympian, if you deal with nothing but life, life will try you to the breaking point. You have to decide that you're going to be in control and that you are going to do what you want to do. You are the machine and you can control the machine. Weakness doesn't get a vote. Sadness, no vote. Frustration, no vote. I don't even give my temper a vote. If we have any lack, it is not because we lack money or opportunity or resources. It is because we lack ideas that have taken form from information. If you search, you will find. So that is the way to discover ideas and life-changing information. Search. In order to find, you must search. You must go and engage in conversations with people of substance. You must go looking, go searching. Rarely does a good idea interrupt you. And as you make a diligent search, you will find just the ideas you need. But I wonder, have you taken the time to think about why am I doing this in the first place? Am I trying to prove something to someone who disrespected me 10 years ago, who isn't even paying attention to my life anymore? Why am I posting this to impress people who follow me on social media that don't even really know me? What is my reason for doing what I'm doing? on the outside people don't look broken you don't see bruises and you don't see scratches and you don't see scrapes and people don't walk around in a big cast and so you can't tell with the naked eye the problem is that there's a malfunction on the inside so many times depression what it feels like is this that i'm so afraid to share what's going on the inside because i'm afraid it might destroy you so what i do is i bury it on the inside of myself only to destroy myself Motivation gets you going. Discipline, commitment, strong habits is what gets things done. Commit once. You don't need to commit more than once. You commit once to the thing that you're going to do, and then you do it every single day. That everyday method is, the, is one of the most powerful methods for reconstructing your entire life. You just go, and procrastination dies. So don't wonder how you overcome procrastination. It's easy. All you do to overcome procrastination is go. We all have these tough moments in life. They can make you or they can break you. Come on now. Come on. Bring it. Come on now. Huh? I had to replace fearfulness with being fearless and take the initiative to do something else with my life. you are putting things off because in the short term, it's easier, 
it's more comfortable, it's more pleasurable to be distracted or to indulge yourself doing something else than it is to sit down and do the actual work to create the outputs that matter when they are needed. And when you need motivation yourself, don't look for someone to scream and yell. Don't look for someone else to give you motivation. Look at yourself and remind yourself why. Why you are doing what you are doing. Remind yourself that this struggle, this temporary pain, this fight, this fight that you're in, this is what will make you stronger and faster and smarter and better. We find ourselves announcing our standards to our relatives, our friends, our associates. We shout our beliefs and condemn those who believe any differently, but then we don't walk the talk. Do as I say, not as I do. This is inconsistent. This leads to a loss of credibility among those who watch us. The human mind isn't used merely because we take it for granted. Familiarity breeds contempt. It can do any kind of job we assign to it, but generally speaking, we use it for little jobs instead of big important ones. Decide now, what is it you want? Plant your goal in your mind. It's the most important decision you ever make in your entire life. You just can't turn on passion. You can't just turn on the desire to execute a task. It just doesn't work that way. And honestly, that isn't even what motivate means. To motivate actually means to provide a motive, a reason why. We've got a chance to grow like never before, but I'm telling you, there's going to be many enemies that's going to try to prevent us. Whatever threatens you, I'm asking you to threaten it back. Take care of your responsibility. If somebody wants to destroy your chances for a good future by their negative talk, negative thinking, putting it all down, I'm telling you, walk away if you have to, walk away. Whatever threatens you, threaten it back. Whatever threatens your opportunity, threaten it back. Now, some of our enemies are on the outside, but here's the most important thing to understand. Some of our enemies are on the inside. You've got to do battle with your own indifference, and you've got to learn not only to nourish your values, you've got to learn to do battle with your enemies. You can have what other people can't have. You can go where other people can't go. You can ask what other people can't ask for because you are not a whosoever. Quit acting like a whosoever. Quit asking like a whosoever. Quit asking like you don't have a right to go in boldly and ask. You are a chosen generation. You are a peculiar people. Say, I'm not a whosoever. You have to learn how to shut your mind against strifeful thoughts. And as soon as they come, you need to say, this is going nowhere. I've been there, done that, and I'm going to change my mind, get in agreement with God, and let God take care of the situation. Our problems do not overshadow our purpose. Our weaknesses do not discount our work, and our deficiencies definitely do not delay our destiny. We have to learn how to work our weakness. You gotta work your weakness because all of us to some degree have a thorn in our flesh. We all have gaps, we all have deficiency, we've all made mistakes, we've all got these things that feel like a thorn in our flesh. You know what? Some of us are so used to bad that we reject better when it comes. Sometimes God proves his love to us by what he's not letting us have. Doesn't mean that it's never going to happen. We just have to spend more time in the weight room, growing, developing, learning to forgive, learning to keep a good attitude when things aren't going our way. The sooner we pass these tests, the sooner God will release what belongs to us. No matter what comes against us, we will make it through. It doesn't mean it's gonna be easy. That doesn't mean there's gonna be no pain involved. But truly, we can do all things. Yes, you can make it through whatever you're going through right now. You can get so strong in spirit that you can be going through really, really difficult things. And while you are, you're still reaching out and helping other people and they don't even know what you're going through.
I'm not in this by myself. I'm not in this thing by myself. You, you are not alone in the battle. You're not alone in the struggle that God has a strategy. And when it's all over, you're going to see that even though you couldn't see him, he was there all the time. People can change their standard by getting around where it's better. People can change their standard by getting associated with what's true, like the bills they gotta solve, the problems they gotta do it. Or they can do it because they're excited because it's something new they wanna take on. Everyone's different, but they gotta find the why and they gotta come up with some daily rituals to get them going and just do a step at a time. That's where you get momentum. I wanna talk about two different dimensions of fear that I want you to understand before you take the lead. I wanna talk about the fear of failure because many, many people don't go as far as they should go because they have apprehension that they won't reach their goal. They just say, I'm gonna stay down here where I'm at and not try because I might lose. I'm not gonna own anything because I might lose it. I'm not gonna buy a house because I might lose it. I'm not gonna get married because I might get a divorce. That's madness, but that's how it is. Failure is a part of the process to becoming successful. Michael Jordan, the greatest basketball player in the world, he took 946 game-winning shots. He has only made 146 of those. You know what they write about? When he make it. So when you fail, it's a part of the process. Keep going, you're supposed to fail. Shit, who you know that gets it right all the time? That's impossible. Have you given yourself permission to succeed? Or are you so intimidated by the fear of failure that you don't try? On the other side of it is the fear of success. I want it, but I don't want all the stuff that comes with it. I don't want to deal with all the problems that come with it. I don't want to deal with the pressures that come with it. I can't handle it. I'm going to stay on this lower level. And when you do that, you are left with nothing but the hope of magic. I'm just going to stay down here where it's comfortable, but I'm believing that I'm gonna get a blessing up here while I'm staying down here. You can't do it. And if you will allow anyone, any voice on the inside to talk you out of this moment, you will forfeit it and be stuck washing your nets when there's a great drought of fish waiting you if you have the courage to believe. So deciding as you look at your life, as you look into the future and say, what fears? Am I holding on to? It's keeping me from breaking out. It's keeping me from living up to my true potential. It's keeping me from having a sense of adventure and excitement in my life. What fears that I'm giving that permission to? Because whatever discomfort you experience, whatever challenges or difficulty that it is, you got to handle. Will it be challenging? Yes. What do you want me to tell you? That it's going to be a picnic? No, it's not. But that's just what you must go through in order to get where you want to go. And guess what? You are strong enough to do it. This dream you got, whatever you want to do, will it happen overnight? No. Will it be a struggle? Yes. Will there be times you won't know what to do? Yes, that's a part of it. But somebody must have told people, oh, life is going to be real easy. If they told you that, I've got a special announcement. They lied. See, when you accept yourself and you accept fear as a fact, but it is not a force to hold you back. So you accept the fact that you are afraid and then you move on anyhow. Taking responsibility for whatever happens to you knowing that you have consciously made the decisions that are now affecting you, knowing that what is happening now today is the direct result of your activity, what you did yesterday. Self-reliance is basically counting on yourself. Now, being self-reliant doesn't mean you can't work with others or trust others. Self-reliance means counting on yourself, trusting yourself being confident with yourself, being responsible to yourself, trusting your own instincts, trusting the conclusions that you have developed from your study of experiences and philosophies, taking the credit that is due you, learning from the mistakes that you have made, being self-reliant. 
Gestalt psychologists give an example of being self-reliant. They say that you're responsible for getting caught in the rain. They say that by deciding not to carry an umbrella every day, you have made the decision to endure an occasional drenching. Translation, by not being prepared, you make the choice of getting caught in some of life's unpleasant circumstances. Be they rain, failures, economic losses, relationship losses, professional losses, personal losses. By not being prepared, thinking ahead, it's your choice. Now here's the other side of it. By being prepared, you increase your chances of success. You increase the likelihood. By being prepared, you increase your chances of success, of seizing opportunities when they come your way, of being ready within yourself to take advantage of once-in-a-lifetime situations. Some people tend to blame others for their mistakes, blame others for their failures. Somebody says, it's not my fault the report isn't done. So-and-so didn't do their part. Of course it's your fault. It's your report too. It's your responsibility to see that everyone you delegated work to does their part. Now, you can't control what others around you do, but it's in your own best self-interest, your enlightened self-interest, that you stay on top of things, especially if it's going to affect your future. You think your boss cares that John didn't do his part? You think he sees John as the bad guy? Of course not. All he sees is that the report isn't done. Bottom line. Be responsible for the things that affect you. You can make sure you're more responsible by checking in with those people who are working with you, the people who make up your team. You can be more responsible by saying, Hey, John, how are you doing with your part? Do you need some help? Can we put somebody else in here to help you finish? Now, if John consistently doesn't handle his part, you've got to replace John. If he isn't doing his share, you've got to find somebody that will. Or what? It will negatively affect you. You can't wake up in the morning that the project is due, hoping and wishing that John has done his part. No, you've got to be responsible because it's going to affect your career too. Now, my approach to my better future very early on in my career was to just go through the day with my fingers crossed. And I used to say something like, I sure hope things will change for the better. Then here's what I found out. They're not going to change. Somebody says, well, then how will my life ever change? Answer, when you change. When you change, when you get better, it'll get better. If you change... It'll all change. Don't put it on someone else. Hope that someone else will change it for you. Take responsibility for yourself. Take personal responsibility. You can't change the circumstances or the seasons or the wind, but you can change your reading habits. You can change whether or not you go for the skills, burn the midnight oil, turn yourself around, multiply your value by two, three, five, ten. That you've got charge of. That you have control of. You don't have control of the constellations, but you've got control over whether or not you go to night school, take adult classes, learn some new skills. You have control over that. And if you don't, that's your fault. You've got to take personal responsibility. You've got to be self-reliant. You, you, you. Nobody else can change your life, alter your ambitions, pave a golden road for you. But you can. It's up to you. Be responsible for yourself. Learn to reap the harvest without complaint. This is a sign of growing maturity. And here's where it comes from, taking full responsibility. Take full responsibility for everything you do. Be responsible to yourself. It's your crop. Whatever your paycheck is, take full responsibility. You say, well, it's my employer. No, it's not your employer. You can become twice as valuable, three times as valuable. Burn the midnight oil, learn some more skills, 
bring more value to the marketplace, I'm telling you, whatever your harvest is, take it without complaint. Take it without blaming others. Self-preparation leads to control over your life. We discussed this in the last session. Whenever you prepare correctly, taking all of the steps you're supposed to take, doing everything in your power to stay on track, whenever your preparations lead to success, achieving your goals, you reinforce the disciplines that got you there. Success leads to reinforcement of the proper disciplines. If what you're doing is working, keep doing it. If what you're doing isn't working, change it. When you are doing all that you can possibly do and are successful at reaching your expectations, keep doing it. Success is a reinforcement. Psychologists call this positive reinforcement. We all know about positive reinforcement. That's how we train our dogs. That's how we teach our kids. That's how the trainers at SeaWorld can get a killer whale to do tricks and follow commands and work side by side with humans by positive reinforcement. When you bring a brand new puppy home and try to teach him not to mess in the house, what do you do? You reward him for going outside or scratching at the door. When you're trying to get your toddler out of the diaper stage, what do you do? You reward her with special presents, make her feel special for learning something new. When you're trying to get your older kids to crack the books and study, what do you do? You reward them when they get good grades. You teach them that the skills they are developing now will have great positive effects on their lives later. But you reward them now. This is positive reinforcement. Learning that there are rewards for doing something good, something worthwhile, something of value. The greater the value, the greater the reward. The better you do, the better your reward. The greater the value, the greater the reward. A bigger paycheck, a better house, financial freedom. It's all a reward system. Now, there are two major benefits of positive reinforcement. Number one, positive reinforcement builds good habits. If what you are doing, the habits you've gotten into, are building your ambition and increasing your success, keep doing them. Your success is reaffirming that these habits are good. Your success tells you that you need to keep doing what you are doing. By reviewing these habits that bring on success, you reinforce them, give them sticking power. Now here's the other side. By reviewing your habits, what you do every day, by reviewing your habits, you may find out that some of them are inhibiting your success. You may find out that what you're doing every day is bad for you. Or you may realize that you've gotten out of some very good habits. Somebody says, well, I've just gotten out of the habit of taking my daily walk around the block. Well, I guess you'll just have to get in the habit of being sick down the road. Somebody says, well, I used to read the books all the time. I've just gotten out of the habit. Then change it. Go back into your disciplines. If you've just gotten out of the habit, just get back into the habit. It's called discipline. If it doesn't work, don't do it any longer. You can keep your fingers crossed if you want to and hope that it'll all straighten out. You can wish for the wind not to blow quite as severely to change in your favor, but we call that naive at best. If the habits that you've gotten into aren't serving you, change them. You can't keep doing this any longer. Don't wish for a better win. The key is to wish for the wisdom to set a better sail. Utilize whatever wind that blows to take you where you want to go. That is the philosophy I picked up at age 25, and it revolutionized my whole life. And here's what I found. I found it was easy. I became a millionaire when I was 31, and I found it was easy. Now here's my definition of easy. It was something I could do. I figure if it's something you can do, it's easy. But here's a little parenthesis. I worked hard at it. I made sure my disciplines were in line. I made sure my habits were good. I made sure I did all that I could. I found something that I could do, but I worked hard at it. 
I got up early, stayed up late, and worked hard from age 25 to 31. But what I did was easy, meaning it was something I could do. Well, you say, Mr. Rohn, if it was so easy, how come during those six years, all those other people around you didn't get rich? Here's why. It's easy not to. How else would you describe it? That's it. It's easy to keep doing the things that don't work. It's easy to keep bad habits. It's easy not to develop the disciplines. It's easy not to. So how come I got rich and they didn't? Here's a philosophical phrase. The things that are easy to do are also easy not to do. That's the difference between success and failure, between daydreams and ambitions. Here's the key formula for success. A few disciplines practiced every day. And those disciplines have to be well thought out. What should you spend your time doing? Don't waste your time on things that aren't going to matter. But a few simple disciplines can change your whole economic future. Future with your family, future with your business, future with your enterprise, your sales career, your management career. A few simple disciplines, a few simple habits, good habits, repeated every day. Now here's the formula for failure. Errors in judgment, repeated every day. All you've got to do is to have a few errors in your judgment and repeat them every day. I'm telling you, they'll spin out of control in 10 years. You'll end up driving what you don't want to drive, wearing what you don't want to wear, living where you don't want to live, earning what you don't want to earn. A few errors every day, bad habits every day, it's disastrous. Now, here's why it's easy to repeat an error in judgment. Because failure doesn't fall at the end of the first day. Bad habits don't show their horrible results at the end of the first day. Or the first week or the first month. It's easy to get faked out. If disaster fell on us at the end of the first week, we'd change our philosophy. But it's so subtle. Errors in judgment. Bad habits. They're so subtle, they get you a little off course, a little off course, a little off course. You keep drifting off course, and all of a sudden you're caught. So you've got the choice right now of one of two easies, easy to do or easy not to do. I can give you in one sentence how I got rich by the time I was 31. I did not neglect to do the easy things I could do for six years. I did not neglect. That's the key. I found something easy I could do that led to fortune, and I did not neglect to do it. The major reason for not having more of what you want in America, more health, more money, more power, more influence, more everything, the major reason is simple neglect. Neglect. And if you don't take care of neglect, it becomes an infection, and then it becomes a disease. So if you're in the habit of not doing it, doing all it takes to get ahead, get in the habit of doing it. Doing all it takes. That's the first benefit of positive reinforcement, building good habits. Now, the second benefit of positive reinforcement is that it creates the energy to fuel additional achievement. It gives you the drive to do more, to not only keep on doing what's right, but to do more of what's right. The disciplines that will help you grow and get ahead of it all. The knowledge that what you're doing is paying off creates more energy to keep going. How easy is it to get up in the morning when you know you're not doing all that it takes? It's not very easy at all. You can just lay there awake thinking, oh, what's a few more minutes in bed? It won't matter much anyway. Wrong. It does matter. It will matter. Now, how easy is it to get up in the morning when you're pouring it on, doing the best you can, anxious to get going, make progress toward your dreams? It's a whole different story. When you're resting to renew your reserves, it's much different than resting to avoid your day. When you're psyched up and excited for your life, 
When you're excited for what you've planned to accomplish for the day, it's amazing you'll wake up before the alarm clock even tries to startle you awake. Your successes fuel your ambition. Your successes give you extra energy. Your successes pave the way for more successes. It's the snowball effect. With one success, you're excited to meet another, and another, and another. And pretty soon, the disciplines that were so difficult in the beginning, the disciplines that got you going, are now part of your philosophy.